another vlog. As you would have seen, I am at the airport and I'm just at my gate waiting for on my flight. Is that a bird? That's a bird inside the um the building. But anyway, um so I am at my gate and I'm just waiting um to board. But yeah, I am tired, but not as tired as I thought I would be, so super excited to go on this trip alone um, and so far it's been great save the, you know this broken meal but um, you know going through immigration wasn't as um, tedious as it usually is like when we're traveling to the United States or like somewhere else so that was good anyway I'll see you guys in Cuba to give you guys a room tour this room is so nice so i'm standing right at the door and to my left is the bathroom and as you turn here there is like this is like a water closet is there a like yep so you have your own little private um toilet here and then this is the shower come on come on come on Look at the shower, the standing shower. And if that wasn't enough, you turn around and then there is a tub and this glass that um, shows you into the room. How, how sexy is this? How romantic is this? How cute is this? And I'm here on a solo trip, which is crazy. Um, and you have this thing right here so you can pull the blinds down if you want. But this, mm-mm-mm. This right here is cute. And then you have the glass and that's me. <laughs> and the um just the sink. And you have your they give you toiletries. Um and then we have our towels. And then we turn back to come out. There is a 
full length mirror which I do like so then now into the room here we have robes iron and then there's a safe um, place to put like stuff and then the room look at this room I mean you saw it just now but so lovely I love the decor the green accents I love the um what do you call this the curtains and the fact that you can pull them it just it's just so I don't know I'm mean, like my words are escaping me but it's just so it's romantic it's very whimsical it's giving peekaboo I see you oh my gosh I love it I really really do like it um, and then of course as you can see there is a sitting area with a table and then there is this cute egg chair and this is the view i honestly thought i got a um what do you call it i honestly thought that i had gotten a ocean view but this is also quite nice so this is it they asked me if i wanted to upgrade but i was like nah this is okay so pretty but yeah guys i'm so excited to be here um let me turn the camera so i am so excited to be here i feel like this room is not giving solo traveler this room is giving vacation but you know what i'm going to love on me this week and we're going to have a good time by myself you know what i'm not by myself i'm with you guys and i don't feel alone when i'm talking to you guys also the hotel is like it's i don't it's not low season but they said that there's literally only 40 people here on the property and i'm like okay <laughs> it's giving private it's giving luxury and i'm here for it also oh wi-fi so the hotel does have wi-fi but they give you this like username and password for you to enter today i have 10 hours and then if it runs out tomorrow i have to go back to them for more so that's how it works so far it is working um i've only used like whatsapp so far but yeah that's the wi-fi situation so for right now though i'm going to change my airport outfit take a shower they have like a snack bar where lunch is at one um lunch isn't usually there but because they don't have that many people here they're going to do it at the snack bar and yes i'm gonna change put on something cute put on a bikini grab lunch and then do what people do on vacation i'm gonna vacation okay <laughs> It's like after five. I had the sandwich, came back up, went to sleep, and I'm just getting back up. So uh, I'm just putting on like a bathing suit to go down by the pool, see what it's about, um, and just chill for a little bit. The Wi-Fi is not working. It keeps disconnecting. And granted, I should have known, but it's kind of annoying because I was told that I have 10 hours. I haven't used it for 10 hours. And yeah, I'm going to go downstairs and ask about that right now. Then I'm going to go to the pool. But the nap was good. I still feel very tired though. I had to force myself to get up. 
so i'm not gonna stay down there long because i need to actually like really sleep because i go on my first tour tomorrow so i'm not gonna do too much right now so yeah let's just go downstairs and see what's happening nothing is probably happening because there's not a lot of people here but either way this is my um ooh, this is my oyster this is my hotel because there's not a lot of people here so it feels very like exclusive and i love that hey y'all so i not too long came back from the pool i met some really nice people uh, like a group of two three four they all came well there's a couple and then the other two came separately but yeah they're all from canada montreal toronto like those areas and we were just talking it was really nice the lady was a jamaican as well so we were just having a nice time talking i'm glad i met at least a group of people because to be here i'm not really like talk to anybody that would have been odd to say the least but yeah um i'm just going to go down to dinner now i'm wearing this very chill very casual because like i said there's 10 people here i haven't counted 10 people there's probably more than 10 they said it's 40 but there isn't a lot of people so really actually i don't feel the need to do the most um so i'm just wearing these like wide legged trousers and this button down shirt from fashion nova um yeah so we're gonna see what the dinner is saying um today and we're gonna see what the dinner is saying tonight and hopefully it's as good as lunch was <laughs> Did. I feel so much better. I feel like yesterday I was like kind of just tired and not energetic, but I am ready. This is what I'm wearing. I'm going on my excursion. We are going on um, a catamaran cruise, and I think there's some like dolphin encounter involved. But yeah, let me show you guys properly what I mean. Yep, so I'm just wearing these pants that I got from Primark and this top i think i got it from old navy and the bikinis underneath but yeah this is the fit and just some sandals and i am going to take my never mind the um mess i'm just gonna take my whoop, my tote bag and yeah that's it let's take a look at the view look at the view so nice and pretty but anyway i have to go It's so quiet. I feel like I have this whole hotel to myself. Like, look at that. Magnificent. Oh my god. This guy. It's just peace. Guys, so I was out there waiting, thinking that, okay, 
my pickup time is at 8 a.m. On my reservation, that's what it says. Didn't have any way to contact these people. Um, 8 o'clock gone, 8 30 to come, and I'm like, what's happening? Nobody at the front desk can help me. They just have the bellboard at the front desk. Um, anyway, eventually I found a toll free number and called them. They're like, oh, your pickup is at 9 20. Seriously? So I'm going to go to the the breakfast buffet um let's see what they have there and get something to eat before the come at least i still get to go so this is what it's looking like guys not looking too bad not looking too bad not looking too bad i have no idea what the hell this is but I'm not gonna lie guys, they're surprising me with every turn with the food. It's not bad. It's, I've had worse food at Reserves. And one thing that they're gonna do is present it nicely. It's not bad. Honestly, like, it's not awful. Look at that. Crunchy, turn eggs. Fresh juice. The fruits aren't bad. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. If pissed was a person, that would be me right now. I'm sweating. I'm hot. I've been waiting downstairs from like eight o'clock. You guys saw, and all know. I'm being told, oh, how the bus, the that excursion came at seven o'clock um this morning 7 30 or something like that and i said well my reservation my thing doesn't say seven it says eight so i called not even knowing that i thought it was a toll-free number or whatever but i called and i'm being charged for calling them but anyway i called them the person said oh it's not seven it's not eight it's 9 20 so i'm like oh okay fine um, so I'm there waiting. I got something to eat, went back. I'm there waiting, 9.20, 9.30, 9.40, nothing. I called the people and back again. Somebody else answer. It was at 8. I said, that's not true because when I went downstairs, no one came at 8. So what the hell? So, like, I told them you need to come back or whatever. The front desk person said, oh, like, they're there every day. The tours usually come at 7. So they don't know why they're I mean told that it was at eight. Um it was supposed to be at eight or nine twenty and it's like ten o'clock now. So if nobody don't come now, no they're not coming again. And I'm like, what kind of fuckery is this? Like I'm so like I'm so pissed. I've never been so upset in my life. And I have two tours with this company. I don't even know what <laughs> Hey guys, it's me again. I mean who else would be? But anyway i took a breather i took a little nap came down for some lunch the food is not giving this time around but you know i'll give them i'll give them um a pass but you know i was chatting with um the friends that i met yesterday um and i met someone new who's also from jamaica so we're talking and i was kind of just giving them like my take on you know how i feel about um Canada because we're all like um living in Canada and stuff like that so we're talking about that and they're a lot older than I am so you know they were giving me tips and stuff but I feel like we resonated a lot on kind of like where we are in terms of like our views on the country or the city Toronto um but yeah that was a good little chat now I'm headed back to the lobby because I need to sort out the issue with the tour and hopefully get that resolved and then I'm gonna go to the snack bar which is right there to get something to eat so let's just hope I get that resolved guys I was wishing I didn't have to do this but made off a jar for one of the ramen because the lunch was not given and they didn't have anything at the snack bar so ramen it is bear that in mind if you guys come to Cuba but at least it's pretty though. 
Good morning, guys. Take two of the excursion debacle. So they ended up like switching around my reservations. I think I told you guys. So today I'm going to be headed to the coffee and rum tour, and I'm not going to be late. So apparently, all the tourists come to pick us up in the lobby at 7:30. I'm seeing a bus outside. That can't be the bus. But anyway at 7 30 so i'm headed on to the lab now it's like 7 10 and yeah this is what i'm wearing just like this top shorts and these sandals because it's the coffee and rum tour um so yeah i'm gonna see you guys once i get downstairs <laughs> Are the coffee beans? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so you, you roast them first and then you ground them over there? There, a machine here. Ah. This is natural, natural coffee. Oh, okay. And this roasting. Oh, and that's a roasted. Ooh, hot. Nice. Natural and roasted. roasting. This is machine. Wow. Like it. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Luis is the proprietor. This guy is the owner of the farm. Okay. Ready? Uh, this uh, farm comes from his ancestors. So As you guys can see, we're like in a souvenir shop. Um, checking out the souvenirs. I haven't gotten anything from here because I got the cards from like the last stop. But yeah, it's like a cute little But I want to like go out of the shops and like walk around and see more because it's just like so different. And I don't really want to stray away from the guide. But let's see if I can do that. But yeah. So um, this is what the Tony's looking like. 
like these things are like their taxis right there. Oh no gracias, no gracias. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, this is why I didn't want to show you from the tour because she said that there are lots of beggars all here and if you give them any money like they're all going to like flock you and stuff like that. I need to flip the camera so you guys can see a little bit more um, of what I'm seeing. But yeah, I have so much to say but I can't do it like right now. I'll just show you guys. Remember when we had the Spaniards, everything was manually. Okay? Pendant la période des Espagnols, tout est manuel. Come on! put my hair up because this heat blowing anyway we're at lunch now so we're gonna see hopefully it's good enough to eat so yeah let's see chat um i'm back from my tour so it was so nice such a lovely tour so i did the cuba sugar sugar rum cigar tour and boy it was i i opening it was humbling it was the first time since i got here that i left the hotel 
um, and yeah I learned so much a lot of the things I learned I already knew but I learned a lot more that put things into perspective um, about the country which what which is what these stories are for right like to give you more information um, I get to get a better understanding of the country that you're in so if you're from the Caribbean or if you're from um, if you're from an island in the Caribbean you would have probably been colonized by um, a country in Europe so if you you may have been colonized by the British um, France or the Spanish so Cuba was colonized by the Spanish hence why they speak Spanish and have adopted a lot of the Spanish customs um, and then they had like an uh, they gained independence from the the, the Spanish and um, became independent so I learned a lot about sort of like the relationship between America and Cuba and sort of like why it is the way it is and why things are the way they are now so sort of what happened is after like Cuba gained independence from the, the Spanish or the Spaniards um, they didn't have anything they were depleted and then the Americans came to help um, and they built up the country built up the banks infrastructure stuff like that um, investing money into the country however what the tour guide was saying is that they invested money into in building up the country so that they could make money in the country and then bring that money back to the US so essentially Cuba wasn't making any money um, at all none of the money were, were theirs and then um, they had the um, the revolution which is a war that I believe that we are supposed to be familiar with um, where Fidel Castro was like the leader of that war and um, after that all the Americans left Cuba and then they took everything with them like all the money everything they had nothing after they left and that's where the embargo came into place so US put an embargo on Cuba so they can trade directly with the US or with any other country because if any other country trades with Cuba then they're going to be in problems with the US and you know a lot of countries get things from the US because the US is big and powerful and almighty so essentially that's like a big part of the problem but in addition to that the Cuban money isn't worth anything even for or to Cubans so even within the country itself they have to pay for things using dollars like American dollars Canadian dollars but they don't earn American or Canadian they they, they earn pesos um, and their money is not worth anything so if they go to a store here they cannot buy anything with pesos so imagine working in pesos and not being able to exchange for goods and services in pesos you have to purchase with um, dollars but you don't earn in dollars so it's like really difficult the only way they can exchange their actual money for goods um, is on the black market and on the black market things are like significantly more expensive she said that usually like pork used to sell for like $25 a pound no it's like 400 not dollars 25 pesos a pound and no it's 400 pesos so just to show you how like astronomical the prices are so she says that I mean um, you know uh, some of the main ways that uh, dollars are introduced into the country of course is you know via tourism and they only accept bills right um, you can't use your card here for anything because the people need the dollars and they earn a lot in tips and stuff like that so through tourism and for persons that would have migrated from Cuba to other countries would send back money to their families here and like also persons that would leave and go to like other countries um, like um, Panama purchase goods and then bring back stuff like that so it was just so eye-opening um, going leaving the hotel going into like the small town of Moran where we went I think I mentioned before that I'm on I'm at Keokoko which is like the main tourist area um, 
and it's they're just like keys off the coast of Cuba not actually on mainland Cuba so we have to there's a long strip that is that attaches to the mainland so we have to drive to like an hour hour and a half to get to mainland Cuba so we drove to Moran which is the closest town and seeing how the people live was like I mean I mean obviously like I knew but I think that it was a little bit more jarring than I expected like there were horse and carriages most persons were moving around on bicycles their taxis are like tricycles um you would have seen in like the videos and stuff like that um most persons were hitchhiking like it is a really simple very like basic life i feel like a parts of cuba has not come out of like a certain age and into the technological era until like i'm back here and i'm like oh like you know, I'm in the resort, the resort is nice and all of that, but the locals, like the actual people that live in Cuba, does not experience any of this. Like they don't even experience the food that we have, that we as like tourists get, which isn't even great to begin with. So I can't imagine what they're eating. So lots of food shortages, um, but it was such a good experience to see and to get an understanding of why and how the country has you know become what it is and where it is at right now and it's not great but they seem happy 